Oh, hey, babe. Doing anything tonight? Huh, I see. You know, I like it when you wear the color red. <laughs> it really brings out the color of your eyes. All right, anyway, babe, uh, I gotta do this uh, video, so I'll hear from you soon, all right? Bye, love you. Bye, Mom. Anyway, guys, what's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Generic Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2, Geography Now, Equatorial Guinea, one of many guineas, as a matter of fact. There's a freaking uh, Just Guinea, then Guinea-Bissau, then Papua New Guinea, then uh, Guinea, 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 then a, a whole bunch of guineas. But uh, I'm still quite asking myself the question, why is, uh, why is the A silent at the end? It's Guinea, just... Even though in Bosnia we say Guinea. When it, obviously, it's uh, pronounced, so it's not Guinea, it's just Guinea. I don't know, but Paul will probably explain more. Hopefully, he explains why the A is silent. So, Paul, looks like uh, you might want to back away there, Paul. I'm not, I'm, I'm taken, you know. <laughs> so, uh, no thanks, Paul. Ugh. Once upon a time, Spain was all like, I'm going to take over the Americas. Yeah, that's where all my glory is going to shine. What? Okay, look, just go play with Western Sahara or something, okay? Just don't bother me, okay? I, I'm investing in your bigger brother that I care so much more about. And that child grew up to be Equatorial Guinea. Oh, the it's child that got no attention. Geography. Now! Hey everyone, I'm your host, Barbie. Hispanics of the world, say hi to your far-off distant linguistic African cousins that you may not even known existed. Seriously, Spanish-speaking Africans. I'm pretty sure they cool. did. Huh? Yeah, and this is where you can <laughs> find them. I knew that, let alone So, them. if you've never heard of this place, that's okay. Most people haven't. I mean, places like South Africa and Canada I'm one of are those. so in right now that it's hard for anybody else to kind of get, like, three seconds in the spotlight. First of all, although called Equatorial Guinea, the country is actually located a few degrees north of the equator, but it was kind of <laughs> close enough, so they're like, eh, we'll just keep that name. Second, the country has kind of like a strange layout when it comes to its territory. There are two main parts, the mainland and the offshore insular parts. The mainland part of Equatorial Guinea is called Rio Muni and is located in Central Africa, right at the Gulf of Guinea mm. under Cameroon and at the top of Gabon. The that has the straightest borders that I've ever seen in any country. So we know that something something's a little fishy there. And it's not the fish from the coast. There's something really fishy here. Uh, so they called it Guinea because of the Gulf of Guinea, I guess. Kind of makes sense. But uh, they couldn't think of any other better name, so they just slapped on Equatorial Guinea. Fuck it. <laughs> So we don't confuse the other ones. The islands of Bioko, located north off the coast of Cameroon, and Anabon, which lies about 660 kilometers southwest from Bioko, with Sao Tome and Principe caught right in between them, creating a nearly perfect diagonal chain of islands. Now, just like we discussed in the Cameroon episode, these islands are on what is called the Cameroon Line, which mm -hmm. is an area on the Gulf that has active volcanic islands formed from tectonic activity. They also own the islands of Corsico, as well as the big and Not little Corsica? Lole islands just off the southwest coast in Corsico Bay, where the Muni River empties into the ocean, making it the border with Gabon. This is also the river where Rio Muni gets its name from. The country is divided into seven provinces with the capital Malabo located on Bioko Island. Keep in mind though, they are currently constructing an entirely new capital called Oyala in the future Wele Nzas province set to be complete in 2020. You know, despite some ongoing protests from citizens, but hey, so almost done. typically aren't well known for being legislatively accommodating in that field. Rio Muni well, uh, I actually just watched like a video on why countries move their capitals. Well, uh, the, the one of the best reasons is uh, a centralization of power because if there are many different ethnic ethnic groups and there's just, there's this just one ethnic group that lives in this one city and that rules over the rest, while the others don't get a say, they just move it to like a centralized position into a country where many different ethnic groups uh, live and they can you know you know run the administration easier like that and without with less um you know infighting so that's one of the good reasons the other reason is centralization of economic uh, power i guess kind of like what brazil did with brasilia but uh, didn't really help build up the economy well except for like brasilia but every every, every other part of brazil is still kind of not feeling it so um so that that is one of the reason why you move the capital there are other many reasons but listen i go over them for now Muni contains about 80% of the entire country's population, as well as the largest city, Bata, found off of the Atlantic coast. The country is kind of small at about 28,000 square kilometers. It's just a little bit bigger than Burundi, but smaller than Albania. Now, due to the recent oil boom, Equatorial Guinea has been able to Cash invest money. heavily in infrastructure projects, like upgrading the two largest airports at Malabo and Bata, as well as adding three new airports on Anabon and Corsico, as well as inland near the still under construction town of Oyala. Road construction has boomed I gotta in the past check that out as well. Google Towns Earth. in the remote east and rainforest areas now have direct access to places that were previously only accessible by river or really long potentially deadly walk where highly aggressive mandrels could attack and eat your face speaking of wildlife okay 
Good thing we have that road. New Guinea may be small, but those scattered insular islands give it quite the range of equal diversity. The country is, of course, mainly tropical in its climate, humid and warm year round. However, the rainy seasons kind of switch off at different parts of the year for the islands versus Rio Muni. From June to August, Rio Muni is dry, whereas Bioko is wet, and then it switches the opposite around December to February. Anabon Island is typically known for being somewhat cloudy all the time. There have been almost no cloudless days registered in their recorded history. The coastal flat plains on Rio Muni rise to interior jungle hills, which, just like their other Congo rainforest neighbors is filled with minerals like tantalum, gold, diamonds, and bauxite. Yeah, those jungles are exploitation time. With bling. Of course, this allows the country to be a cradle of biodiversity, harboring a monkey haven with dozens of primate species dominating the treetops all over. Despite Mostly this, the humans. <laughs> Giraffe. At about 3,000 meters, the highest peak is Someone Pico Basile, smashed a which is the giraffe. only recorded active volcano <laughs> in the know. country that actually erupted in 1932. Now, here's the thing. For most of their history, their economy was heavily centered around forestry and fishing. Nothing too crazy. Then, 1995 came, and they discovered a ton of oil off the coast, and everything changed. Suddenly, America would like to know your the location. largest African oil exporters, and today, over 95% no, of their they don't exports know where are you are in oil or hydrocarbon production. And since the population was so small, they had an influx of revenue to disperse amongst the country. Nonetheless, they are very aware that it won't last forever and the oil is expected to run out around 2035. So the government actually instituted this plan called the 2020 plan, a strategic policy that will supposedly allow the country to diversify their revenue sources and industries before time runs out. Of course, this new policy hasn't been shy of a few controversies from the populace and we'll dive into that right about now. Equatorial Guinea may be going through some economic prosperity seasons, but there are some issues at stake. The people of Equatorial Guinea are unique in that, unlike most African nations, they come from centuries of Spanish influence. First of all, the country is made up of about 800,000 people and has the highest per capita GDP in Africa as of 2016. Keep in mind, this Good is due to the very small population, hence per capita. Nigeria actually has the largest GDP overall. The country is made up of numerous ethnic and tribal groups, the largest ones being... Highest GDP, it shows... Uh... Uh, children here in like a hay bale <laughs> uh, improvised uh, clothing so yeah highest gdp but still still very african numerous ethnic and tribal groups the largest ones being the thong at about 86 percent the booby <laughs> Booby at seven percent, five percent. Oh, that's so funny. Groups like the Ndowe, Anaban, Bujeba, and the rest are other groups like Spanish, Chinese, and other Europeans at around two percent, mostly Spanish. Although Spanish is the official language spoken by about seventy percent of the country, French is commonly spoken as well, especially since they are kind of surrounded by and are forced to interact with French-speaking neighbors. Portuguese is also spoken, which allowed them to join the list of Lusophone nations recently. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. most people identify with their specific ethnic group and language first. Oh, and look, it's Will Smith. Spanish as a second language. They became the first non. Francophone nation to join the financial cooperation in Central Africa and use the Central African CFA franc as their currency. They also use the Type C and E electrical outlets at 50 hertz and drive on the right side of the road. In 1968, they gained a relatively smooth independence from Spain and then... Well, you know how it works in Africa. Term one, having fun. Term two, watching you. Term three, oh, you're going to get assassinated. No, seriously, cool. this guy was yeah. insane. He called himself God and the unique miracle of Africa, drove out a third of his population. He stole the money from the treasury. And on Christmas, he made his soldiers dress up like Santa Clauses and ordered them to execute 150 of his opponents in Malibu Stadium. As Mary Hopkins song, those were the days blasted on the speakers. True story. Fun side note, his children were whisked away to North Korea before his death, where they grew up and learned Korean. His daughter, <laughs> Monique, actually just wrote a You guys are fucking it's fascinating. Crazy. Then his nephew rebelled and started a coup and destroyed the regime. To this day, they claim to be a multi-party democracy. However, in practice, it's more classified as a dictatorship as Teodoro Nguema Ubiang Mange has been president since 1979. And even though there's a controversy behind his rule, people are kind of like, well, at least he's not his uncle. I mean, he did kind of help build the infrastructure. So, eh. Nonetheless, Why this are you is gay? still an ongoing <laughs> issue. The majority at around 87% of the country identifies as Catholic, which is why it was a huge deal when former Pope John Paul II visited Bata in 1990. 1982, and the rest are either Protestant or indigenous animists. Culture-wise, Equatorial Guinea has a very vibrant artistic side noted for their abstract sculpture work dominated by the Fung and Bubi cultures, <laughs> especially in the capital Malibu. <laughs> Artists like sculptor Gabriel Mokolo and cartoonist Ramon Esono Ebale are well-known, and international pop star Anfibio, who toured across Europe, who is also a cardiologist on the side, believe it or not. Another notable figure would be Eric the Eel nice. Usambani, who just didn't give up at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. You'll typically see the Ibanga white powder dance 
happening all over as it is the national dance of the Fang people, typically done with music played by drums, wooden xylophones, and thumb pianos. Cassava is the staple food mashed up into a paste, and famous dishes include peanut cream chicken with boiled plantain and fish with crushed pumpkin seeds served in a banana leaf. And of course, many of the dishes include Spanish-influenced ingredients and techniques. You can totally find an interesting African-style paella or coquetas. And that's not the only thing they share with Spain. Once again, because of its linguistic properties, Equatorial Guinea is kind of like the small anomaly that sticks out in Africa. First of all, Gabon, does... Cameroon, and Nigeria are probably their okay. closest African friends. I was reading the flag. Centuries of business and culture. Many fun shared. tribes can also be found in these countries as well, which adds a whole other level of kinship. Cameroon did recently shut the border, though, after some controversy with a fisherman being killed and two missing immigrants. It's a, it's a tricky situation. China and the U.S. and South Korea were one of the first ones to jump on that oil boom and invest in Equatorial Guinea in the 90s, and today have embassies for each other. Their best friend, though, would probably have to be Spain. Although European colonialism has always left a sour taste in people's mouths, the Equatorial Guineans actually maintained a somewhat decent relationship with the Spanish and developed quite close bonds even after they gained independence. Spain still protects them at times of need and tons of Guineans immigrated to Spain and the majority of the white population... Oh, by the way, when I squint my eyes, it's not because I have bad, you know, eyesight. It's just that I'm, I'm, I'm like really focusing. That's, that's how I like focus. <laughs> because when I was in like a high school and a, a college when i was trying to like focus so hard i would be like oh like this on the on the teacher and there's like and the teacher's like uh you sure you, you see me yeah i see you i'm just focusing real hard <laughs> so i was kind of freaking out all the uh, teachers Equatorial Guinea are Spanish. In conclusion, while the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa was squabbling in a cacophony of French and English with a little bit of Portuguese on the side, this little sliver of land was like, eh, I'm gonna do my own little thing and I'm here to stay. Deal with it. Stay tuned! Eritrea is coming up next. Not quite just yet. Oh man, we're still gonna be in Africa. This is another Africa tour. Denaric Wolf tours Africa. Hey, John, first, the flag. So I don't really have a lot of time because as I'm filming this, it's getting dark outside, and by the time you don't have three minutes, I'm done filming okay. this. It's probably going to be nighttime. So, how did you like the Equatorial Guinea episode? I'm assuming you saw it. Uh, if you didn't, um, that's cool. I mean, you can just learn about the flag and nothing else about the country. I'm just saying. I mean, you're free to do whatever you want, but I mean, yeah, just like yeah. There are many weirdos yeah, on the internet. You know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So this is going to be a cool one. Pretty simple. Very straightforward. And let's jump into it without further ado. <laughs> So, Equatorial Guinea, for those of you who already <laughs> Voice knew, crack. I'm assuming the ones... Uh, let me hear it again, let me hear it again. So, Equatorial <laughs> Guinea, for those of you who already knew, I'm assuming the ones who saw the episode, had quite a hostile history after independence. Francisco Muema was pretty high up on the ranks in terms of sociopathic leaders. Therefore, the flag has changed a few times, but basically this is what it looks like today. The flag is a horizontal... We have a lot of those in Eastern green, Europe. ...white and red with a blue isosceles triangle on the left hoist side. The blue triangle represents the sea that connects the islands with the mainland. The green represents the natural resources, agriculture, and jungles. The white Makes represents sense. peace. And the red stands for... Uh, syntax area. 404 please reload page and try again network administrator is offline oh sorry uh wrong script <laughs> it really actually stands for oh it does good <laughs> space invaders yeah, you guys were waiting for that, weren't you? Yeah, finally! Once again, thank you so much, Vincent, our favorite Dutchman, for making that splendid animation. Check out his stuff, Mode7.com, Mode7, all that good stuff. And once again, our favorite Irishman, Potter. Couldn't also, no adverts on my channel, no. Nope. world trip thing, or, yeah, last I checked, he was in Turkmenistan at the gates of hell doing this. No joke, that's really what it's called. Get a little closer. It's gonna be quite right. the interesting episode. Just little, like some of the past flags closer. we've done, the flag of Equatorial Guinea contains the coat of arms in the center of the flag. The coat of arms has a white or gray shield with a silver cotton tree sometimes referred to as the god tree on top of it the tree represents the place where the first treaty was signed by Judaism? the local ruler and spain centuries ago above the tree lies six six-pointed stars representing the mainland region known as rio Muni, jews and control this islands place owned by the country which are bioko anaban corsico and the two elobe islands underneath the tree is a banner with the words I don't Unidad, that, paz and justicia meaning unity peace and justice in spanish now this flag was adopted after yeah. current president teodoro ubiang wema umbasogo took over in 19 and I'll call you day, Gerald. He's the longest running <laughs> African president. Prior to him, when his crazy uncle took over, they used this flag. The flag had the same color configuration, with but a contained a coat of arms with various tools, a sword, and a red rooster on top with the same three words on a banner below, but with an additional banner on top that said trabajo, meaning work. And we all know how his regime Socialism. worked out. <laughs> 
Now keep in mind, Equatorial Guinea was actually first colonized by the Portuguese, and then the Spanish kind of bought it out in the 1700s. It was a tactic they used to kind of help them out with the Atlantic slave trade. Therefore, during those years, they were technically under the Portuguese and Spanish Empire flags. So that's about it. Equatorial Guinea's flag cool. is pretty simple. I mean, yes, it has a coat of arms in the middle of it, but it's a simple coat of arms with just like a tree and a few stars and whatnot. Which is why I'm really going to dread it when we get to the UK. I mean, this is actually a thing. What?